Nyutai died. The late Mr. Simeon Nyutai died. But we'll be still waiting for those reactions to see what exactly they have said. I'll be coming to Brian, but the, there are a number of uh, those leaders who have also sent their condolence messages. I'd like to read one from uh, the majority whip in the Senate, and this is from Irungu Kangata who says condolence to the family of the late Nichai on his demise. He was an astute administrator, gifted leader, a family man. His visit to Muranga, he recalls this, in 1975 as a PC, that's provincial commissioner, changed life for one late Irungu, a poor mechanic, a dad to yours truly, referring to his dad. And uh, just before that, it's not only uh, the leaders who are reacting to this. Uh, there's uh, Abuga Makori. He is, I believe, comes from the same area as Le Simeon Chai, and he says this, um, he, he, he talks about uh, the protection uh, that Simeon Nyechai gave them in that area. So there's quite some reaction that is coming out of every region, but we're still waiting for that. And uh, perhaps, Brian, um, Simeon Nyechai was not only known for the public service, um, mm. but he was also known for uh, his business acumen, and he has vast business interests all over the nation. Perhaps uh, take us through that. Rightly put my, my, by my colleague Ken, um, former minister Nyechai was a business mogul in his own right because he had business interest in a lot of um, you know, areas of investment from agriculture to banking and to so many more. Now our senior reporter Rita Tinina now takes a look at the life and times of the late Simeon Nyechai. To his friends assertive, to his foes outright overbearing. One of the most senior and influential personalities from the Gusi community. Career civil servant Simeon Nyachai rose through the ranks from a district clerk to chief secretary who held sweeping powers. The son of Paramount Chief Musa Nyandusi, Nyachai was born in 1932 and attained his early education at the Nyancho Seventh-day Adventist School and Kereri Intermediate School before joining the Kisi Government African School in 1949. But he opted to be employed at his father's chief's camp as a district clerk in 1953, missing the chance to sit for his O-level exams. His influential father would later in 1957 arrange for him to study public administration in London. When he returned to the country, he was posted as a district officer in 1960. After Kenya attained independence, he rose to become a district commissioner in 1963. Two years later, in 1965, he became a provincial commissioner, a position he held for 14 years under the Jomo Kenyatta administration. When Daniel Moy took over power following Kenyatta's death in 1978, he retained him as a provincial commissioner before appointing him chief secretary, equivalent to the current head of civil service. He was arguably one of the most powerful and longest serving the country has had. The post was abolished after Nyachai's retirement in 1987. He kept away from the national limelight until 1992 when he made a comeback, this time as a politician. He was elected member of parliament for Nyaribari Chache on a Kanu ticket following Kenya's first multi-party elections. He would once again work with Daniel Moy's government. He was appointed minister for agriculture. In 1998, he landed himself the powerful finance docket, but his stay at the ministry was short-lived. On the 24th of April 1998, he announced that the government was broke, a move seen by analysts as very bold and which came with consequences. He was transferred to the Ministry of Industry. He did not take up the position as the ministry was seen as a less influential one. He quit government. He fell out with Kanu, left the party, and looked to the opposition ahead of the 2002 general election, setting his sights on the presidency. He joined Ford People, then a small party, which was not part of the equation, which saw the main opposition parties, among them Mwai Kibaki's Democratic Party and Raila Odinga's Liberal Democratic Party, join hands to form the National Rainbow Coalition. Nyechai nevertheless took a shot at the presidency. He came third after Kanu Zuhuru Kenyatta and Nax Mwai Kibaki, who won the election. But Nyechai's Ford People Party got 14 MPs into parliament. The ninth parliament saw divisions in NAC, and Mwai Kibaki, who needed all the support he could get, reached out to Nyechai and his Ford People MPs. 
Nyechai was appointed Minister for Energy and thereafter Minister for Roads. Simeon Nyechai, who had served as MP for Nyaribari Chache for 15 years, sought a comeback to Parliament in the 2007 elections but lost to Nax Robert Munda. Also a prominent businessman with interest in, among other sectors, agriculture, transportation and real estate, Nyechai retired from politics in the year 2008, but would endorse Uhuru Kenyatta's bid for the presidency in the 2013 elections. He kept away from the national limelight, making only a few public appearances, including one during the burial of his first wife in September 2016, when he endorsed Gusi Unity. Father of, among others, judge of the East African Court of Justice, Charles Nyachai, he carved himself the figure of a fiery speaker and non-nonsense leader, his own man, a man who not only took a bold move during the Kanu era to declare the country broke, who retired from the civil service and later quit government, all outlined in his autobiography titled Walking Through the Corridors of Service. Simeon Nyachai, quite literally, walked through the corridors of service. Rita Tinina, KTN News.